the challenge should be to try and play as diverse characters as possible. It would get boring for the audience and for the, for the actor if you played characters that were similar all the time. What I want is to work with people with strong visions. They do this crazy thing now, for, more from boys and girls, they do this kind of chemistry test. I'm like, that's the most absurd thing in the world to me. I don't know, sometimes you feel like a total waste of space, really, when you look at people who have proper jobs. And then you go, what the, what am I doing? Hello Believe Nation, it's Evan. My one word is believe and I believe in people more than they believe in themselves and my sincere hope is that if you see in yourself what I see in you, you'll be able to change the planet. So to help you on your journey, today we're gonna learn from actor Cillian Murphy and my take on his top 10 rules of success. Rule number seven is my personal favorite and I'd love to know which one you guys like the best. Also, as you're watching, if you hear something that really resonates with you, please leave it down in the comments below and put quotes around it so other people can be inspired by it as well. And if you leave it within the first couple hours of this video going live, you have a chance to win one of two daily prizes. The challenge should be to try and play as diverse characters as possible. It would get boring for the audience and for the actor if you played characters that were similar all the time. Hop one, one, hop two, hop one, two, three. Tish, tish, tish. Flap, flap, flap. We're actors, you know, we're supposed to be able to inhabit different characters. That's kind of the, that's our job. That's what acting should be, surely. Big, big action flick, innit? it? <laughs> I'm Killian Murphy and I'm an actor, I suppose. Uh, Killian, I've also heard you say that one of your happiest places is on set when you hear the word action. Yeah. Why? I mean, if I'm in the film, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm hiding watching. Uh, otherwise, it's just awkward <laughs> for everyone in farm. <laughs> Isn't that Killian Murphy? <laughs> yeah, what's Don't he doing? Him. <laughs> He's just watching. He'll leave. He's, He's happy him. now. Uh, yeah, well, it is. It's that thing of where, you know, that's the kind of the moments you've been looking forward to and building up towards. And, and, it, and it, is tr it is true to say that time kind of slows down and, and you, you stop sensing things in a kind of a normal way and and um, yeah, I love it. I mean, it's my favorite part of the whole of the whole thing and it's it's the thing you kind of live for, I think. What was the hardest scene or moment uh, for you as an actor this season on the show? I mean, the whole thing is is challenging due to the, the nature of the schedule and the, le you know, the, it's a very talky show. There's a lot of dialogue and there's um, uh, a lot of big scenes for Tommy and he's kind of, you know, this season particularly, there was a lot of trauma that he, he had to endure. I don't know, man. I love doing it. I love all the big, I love the, the big scenes. I love working with Helen McCrory. I love working with Paul Anderson. I love working with Tom Hardy. You know, I, 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 I relish those big scenes, um, those confrontational scenes. They're very, very satisfying for an actor when you get that caliber of actor uh, acting up, you know. Uh, so they're never, there's, there's nothing that, you always go home for work going, wow, I went to work today, you know? So this would be, I'm trying to think now, is this like your third or fourth film, Chris Reno? Well, people are saying fifth, but you know, I, I only pop up in the Batman thing True. a little bit. So. Yeah. What you want as, a, as a, an actor, or certainly what I want is to work with people with strong visions, you know? And, and you can't find anybody with a stronger vision than Christopher Nolan, you know I mean? Mm. He's written, produced and directed this, you know, thing and it's kind of, kind of phenomenal and you know it, it is still collaborative like we spent a lot of time on the phone talking about this character and talking about how to pitch it and and he just kind of left me off to go and do my research and then yeah. bring my research to him and say look I've thought this this and this might be appropriate so what do you think so yeah I mean you're there is absolutely scope to collaborate but you want to work with someone who is that they'll guide you yeah or it just has I mean he like he knows exactly every frame of the film as, he, as he's shooting it, you know, which is yeah. so comforting. You know? It's a real privilege to work with him every time. Um, I mean, it, it, there's no argument that he's like, one of the greatest directors around at the moment. I think everyone accepts that. So as an actor, selfishly, you want to work with the best people and, and he's definitely one of those. And, but every, every, every relationship between a director and a, an actor should be collaborative. I mean, it, you know, they're the boss and they're the leader, um, but you know, it has to be an exchange of ideas always. I just was realizing that I was, I was really into performing, you know, and I wasn't quite sure. I just, live performance, I, was, I really liked playing the guitar and singing and I really liked acting on stage. 
this director of a theater company came in and worked with us for over the course of a few months, and I loved it. And I kind of I thought he was just the coolest guy ever. I just developed a huge man crush on him. And then I'd see him out in Cork drinking, like in pubs and things. And, and, I, and I was like, you've got to give me an audition for a play. For a play to him, he, he gave me an audition. And it was for this play called Disco Pigs. And it became quite successful. We made the play and then we made the film. We man and woman now. We little babas no more. That kind of changed everything, really. I had never, ever envisaged ever being in a film or being on television or anything like that. I, was, I wanted to be a theater actor. That's what I saw happening, you know, when I decided to go for it. Uh, I moved to London and started to get slightly bigger parts. And I did this film called 28 Days Later. Hello! People saw that film and it, people saw it in America. And that definitely was a marker as well because, you know, I was working with Danny Boyle and it was the lead part. <laughs> Oh, I shouldn't have done that. I was really aware of the script being fantastic and, and Danny being Danny. And I really, really worked at the auditions. I did like five auditions. And auditioning is, is a terrible, terrible experience, you know, because, you know, you're not giving a performance. It's a different skill, not one that I'm very good at or was very good at. Danny saw something and took a chance. And that is a film I'm very proud of. And for some reason, it resonated with the people and people went to see it. So that's where people, you know, began to attempt to pronounce my name. <laughs> um, I've been attempting ever since. And uh, you're both actors who uh, tend to start in uh, more dramatic roles than comedic ones. Uh, is that a conscious decision as an actor? Or is it literally the scripts that come in, the ones that you like, are the ones with those roles? Uh, yes, actually, yeah. it, it tends to be that. I mean, I love love watching comedies or whatever, but the films that I really, really, the ones that are close to my heart, I guess, are the <clears throat> the, the dramatic ones, you know, and the, yeah. the pieces of, generally not just films, like pieces of art and literature and everything, they tend to be the ones, I think, where the stakes are raised. And to me, that is drama. Yeah. The greater the stakes, the greater the drama. Completely. And that, to me, is more compelling to watch. And that's, I guess, the sort of material that I'm drawn to. It's always a gamble, that casting thing, you know? And they, 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 in fact, they, 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 they do this crazy thing now, for, more for boys and girls, they do this kind of chemistry test. Of, like, that's the most absurd thing in the world to me. How can you manufacture that? It's, it's some weird alchemy. You can't, it's just there or it isn't there. And we just, you know, it, it was the same for me. We went for dinner. It happened that I, myself and my wife, were obsessed with the fall at the time. And I was like, you know, I thought he did such an incredible job and I loved that show. And then we just met and, 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 it, and it just seemed to work. And there's a similar sense of humor and a similar approach to work, as Jamie said. And, you know, I, I forgot, I mean, I forgot how, how intense that film is. And we forgot, like, it's, it doesn't really let up. But so we had, we had to, the three of us, I think, together, we, we, we managed to make the atmosphere on set, you know, quite quite an enjoyable one, uh, despite everything else. And, and I think, again, it's to Sean's uh, testament, you know, that that's the wrong word, but Sean should take the credit for the fact, you know, there was families around and it was a very, very lovely environment to, to work in. And then we, 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 we had fun. And I think you have to do that. You're lucky to be working. You're lucky to be working on such a good project. And, you, you know, you can't go around all sort of sad and intense, you know, it's got to, you've got to get through the day. I don't know, sometimes you feel like a total waste of space, really, when you look at people who have proper jobs. And then you go, what the, what am I doing? Flouncing around, putting on voices and dressing up. But people need to go to the pictures, and people need some sort of escape. Artists don't let people down, like politicians let people down, and bankers let people down. The quality of the work may fluctuate, but they keep making it, they keep trying, and they keep giving some sort of sucker, I think, you know? kind of overpaid and, and there's a huge amount of stupidity and hot air that, that surrounds it all and a lot of that I don't subscribe to but I think sometimes the film can change someone's life. If you can do that through a piece of art then that's, I feel like you're giving something important back. Well I think you always, you have to learn from each job you do as an actor, you're constantly learning. Um, it's an ongoing learning process really. Um, um, but this is unique for me, certainly, in having 
to develop a character over a long period of time and sort of grow with a character. I've never done that before. And I suppose to have the confidence in going that once you've established it and people, you know, have invested in it to a degree, then you can be brave. So I suppose it's that I've tried to take that from it as a lesson that you can actually be brave with the character and take it places that you mightn't have necessarily thought of at the beginning. There's such an amount of um, resources out there for an actor, you know, nowadays to, to you can research everything and, and I think that is your duty to, to, to do that. Um, but again, you know, I always, when, with every role, mm -hmm. I try to do as much research as possible to have it all available. And once you've done that, kind of leave it behind because you have to focus on the truth of the character and you have to make the character as believable as possible. In terms of the research though, I mean, were there any, um, were there any performances that you drew upon? I mean, was there any kind of film or, you know, theater or play or anything like that that you've kind of watched or drew upon to give you a sense of the character? No, I don't really go to other performances for inspiration, really. Uh, I did a lot of research kind of about soldiers that had shell shock. And, yeah. Um, that was kind of what sort of informed it mostly. Hmm. On that, I mean, what did you do? I mean, did you meet with, you know, PTSD survivors or? No, I didn't. I mean, I wanted to try and f sort of, because there's a lot about it nowadays, yeah, obviously, of course, but, yeah. but back then they didn't have a clue. They didn't really know how to treat it and they didn't, and the symptoms were so kind of bizarre. Like I read about this one soldier who, who actually went blind for no physiological reason other than he was the trauma made yeah. him blind so that that was the power of what they had seen so they were kind of you, you kind of have to interpret it as sensitively and as kind of i don't know as carefully as you can <laughs>